Hi everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, which will be a demo of biometric authentication automation for your GXP environment. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to be here with Mark and I. We're really excited to, uh, to get things started. So for those of you who are just joining, I know I see some people trickling in. My name is Emily Patterson, and I am part of the distribution team here at Grantech. And on the call today, we also have Mark Diamond from Integral Biometrics. Mark, you can skip forward one slide. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Emily. Uh, yeah, of course. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to one of our partners, Mark Diamond and his team at Integral Biometrics have been working with us to bring a key component of a Pharma 4.0 strategy to our customers. Along with the development of sophisticated equipment and software systems to improve factory automation, comes the introduction of more authentication and security requirements. So we're hearing customers tell us that they're looking for the ability to automate the time-consuming logins and e-signatures required to achieve compliance. So today, to help us better understand our options, Mark will be sharing info about Integral's products and experiences, and Mark will also be conducting a live demo for us all today, which is exciting. Mark has a background in building products from emerging technologies and has also been an innovator in internet services, voice over IP and biometric identification and authentication. When he's not working with new technologies, Mark and his wife, Lisa, work together to achieve their Argentine tango moves on the dance floor, which is really exciting. Next slide. Okay. So I quickly just wanted to go through a few housekeeping items with everybody. Uh, they go without saying, but we know everybody here attending has a very busy schedule, but when possible, try to minimize distractions. If you are to miss anything, don't worry. Uh, you will be receiving a recording of this webinar once it's available. There's a lot of great information coming your way. So feel free to take notes as we go through the presentation and the demo. And please provide feedback to us where you see fit. We're always trying to find ways to improve these experiences for each and every one of you. Lastly, on the right-hand side of the screen, you will see a chat window. And if you have any questions, just pop them into that chat window. We'll address them throughout the presentation or during the Q&A session at the end. And we'd love to hear from all of you. So please don't hesitate to, hesitate to reach out with questions. And one thing to note is all of your questions are private and can only be seen from our team. So no concerns with that, with any of those questions asked. And that's everything from me. So I'm now gonna hand everything over to Mark and I'll uh, jump in later during the Q&A. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Emily. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Um, for our webinar today, I'll be going over our company products and integrations at a high level. Uh, then we'll do a live demo, uh, go over some video demos of integrations with customer applications. Um, so that's our that's our basic plan here. And then we'll have some time for questions and discussion, as long as I don't talk too long. Okay. No, no, I, I won't. <laughs> okay. So as uh, Emily mentioned, my name is Mark Diamond, um, and uh, our company, Integral Biometrics, has been providing validated biometric solutions for GXP manufacturers for the last um, 18 years. Um, last year, our product was named uh, Johnson & Johnson's Global Standard Solution for Biometrics in their factories, and uh, they deployed, and we deployed on a global enterprise-wide platform. It was an exciting, uh, exciting deployment. Um, we, we have happy customer sites in North, North and South America and Europe, uh, and many of these have been in production from 8 to 18 years. Um, we have some key partners that we're working with. Uh, Grand Tech has been a, a phenomenal partner working with us presenting this uh, webinar. Um, we also are partnering with uh, Corber, uh, um, where their Chemian product is, wor is working with, with our product uh, beneath it. And, um, ILOC, who is our supplier of um, iris sensors, um, they have an offer in the marketplace also that takes advantage of our platform for doing uh, logical authentication. Okay. So the challenge our customers face is repeatedly authenticating to numerous authentic automation systems while gloved, goggled, and gowned. Um, each of these systems has different keyboards, touchscreens, password requirements, 
Um, and users are encumbered by various protective gear um, uh, and restrictive environments that makes typing and interacting with these systems even harder. Uh, this leads to login repeats, lockouts, and the legendary password post-its. I know we all have them. Um, <laughs> uh, these challenges wear down a worker's patience and increase their stress. Um, and overall, this is a formula for frustration, failure, and friction in our operations. And everyone knows, knows that's, that's bad. Um, we can do better. Biometrics is better. Authentications at a glance or a touch or a swipe are a huge improvement that make the lives of factory workers much better, improve our operations. Our products offer a huge, offer a unique benefit, sorry, happy workers and happy management. Happy workers are more productive and produce greater quality. Management is made happy by market improvements in compliance, security, and productivity, not to mention a really good ROI. Let's take a look at our solution at a high level here. And I know this is a very high level. I won't be showing any architecture diagrams today. Don't worry. Um, we offer what we call a biometric authentication automation and integration platform. We enable logins, e-signatures, uh, password updates um, uh, via biometric matching with selected sensors and technologies in a common platform integrated with the most common applications on the shop floor, such as manufacturing execution systems, uh, ERP systems, um, um, uh, ELIMs, uh, um, such as uh, things like Lab LabVantage, HMIs, doc management, things of this sort, all the different things that are part of your supply chain. So we've been working for uh, the last 18 years building uh, integrations with uh, leading suppliers of manufacturing automation systems. Um, Verum, Pazax is one of these applications that we integrate with, Rockwell, PharmaSuite, Siemens, Camstar. I think they just recently renamed that product too. Um, uh, JDE, um, SAP, Wonderware. These are all some of the products you may be using in your facilities that, uh, that we have integrated. Um, what we do is we take our learnings as we integrate this new technologies um, and we codify these methods into a collection of toolkits and what we call navigators that are designed to deliver rapid integrations. And by rapid, I'm talking about typically one to three days of work to integrate a new system. Of course, it doesn't include the validation. Let's not, let's not be silly. Um, <laughs> our platform primarily supports systems running in Windows environments and can support Windows native applications, web browser-based applications, Electron apps, Java apps, uh, and web service enabled applications. So we have an integration on the, on the front end for uh, integrating, integrating with uh, GUIs. We also have a back-end integration for integrating with services and being a trusted third-party application. We support systems with and without Active Directory support, and uh, we currently support environments such as j, &J Global Network with multiple Active Directory domains. Okay, so our products offer a rapid return on investment. Our customers have conducted Kaizen studies over the years to determine the cost of manual logins, e-signatures, multi e-signatures uh, with regular keyboards and which, with touch screens. In clean rooms and ATEX environments, um, these, are, these numbers go up due to specialized equipment and protective gear. Um, I don't know if you folks have uh, tried to type on, on a glass keyboard or on a touch screen um, on one of these uh, old Siemens somatic systems. Uh, it, it takes a little while to actually just enter a basic uh, password. And we've seen, we've seen workers um, when, when asked to demonstrate access to these systems, make repeated mistakes trying to log in uh, to these systems. And we've also noted that they keep their password shorter on these systems because they fail to log in so many times. We found um, that in regular work environments, our solutions eliminate two and a half weeks of labor per employee per year. And in places like shared packaging lines where changeovers impact downtimes during reconfigurations, We've delivered significant productivity gains of six or seven percent by speeding up changeovers by three to four minutes per changeover. If you consider the added value of eliminating lockouts and other authentication related delays, 
uh, and the administrative costs of doing those things, a strong value proposition seems clear. Our, our company focuses on quality, compliance, and reliability. Um, as the front door to critical factory workflows, we make sure that we regularly oil the hinges and test for squeaks. Uh, we also deploy our metrics tool uh, to all sites to monitor and report on key performance indicators to proactively identify and pinpoint system issues to enable rapid response to potential issues. We're trying to be proactive in our support and these systems help us do that. Um, our system is also supported by centralized application servers that may to maintain 24 uh, CFR 21 part 11 and annex 11 audit logs and a custom configuration application that allows customized configurations to be maintained by customers to facilitate site, site additions and system changes. This tool um, is a pretty good innovation. Um, it enables web-based customization for languages, keyboards, and management of performance settings and some application integration parameters. Our goal is to maximize globalization and reliability while minimizing validation and change management. So that this config tool actually allows our customers to deploy changes to our application uh, that dynamically get brought into the application on reboot um, that can change what applications are supported, how those applications are supported, the timing of certain interactions, things like that. Um, one thing I'd like to note on this slide, it may look like we're talking about a cloud-based architecture. Um, and while our, our system is designed to work over networks and to work um, over um, far distances and still be efi efficient, um, our systems are typically hosted inside the customer's network. We are protecting PII after all, right? Okay. Um, we work with specific sensors that we've identified, tested, integrated, and validated. Uh, the iLock sensor, which you can see here on the left, um, is a cost-effective and fast um, biometric device that when mounted offers fast and reliable sh shared matching. Um, and with Iris Biometrics, every person in the world is unique. The, uh, the false accept ratio is beyond the number of people on the planet. Um, we're collaborating with iLock on a next generation sensor that will be smaller, cheaper, and even faster um, at matching than the current solution. We expect this to be available next year um, with backward compatibility with existing user enrollments. Um, the digital persona sensor is a fingerprint sensor, clearly not usable in clean rooms, but it, it is a cost-effective solution um, for spaces where people are not gloved. Um, the, uh, it's a low cost, fast and reliable solution. We also support uh, Lumadime finger vein sensors and capacitive sensors as well that work within our environment. Our custom RAD device is a, um, it's called a remote authentication device. Um, and it is designed to integrate with legacy HMI systems. Um, for example, older equipment that you might have that you don't want to upgrade or replace. Um, and or systems that do not use Windows operating environments. The rest of our software runs directly on a Windows environment. It also runs in Citrix environments as well. Um, if you'd like more information on supporting these legacy systems, there's a lot more to talk about there, and I'm not going to be dem demonstrating that today, um, but it is a rather innovative uh, product that can uh, uh, extend the life of your validated um, systems on your shop floor. Um, We've also recently developed a solution uh, for smart card or RFID-based authentication. This will support wearable bands and smart card RFID technology-based tokens and devices. With our platform approach, we can offer a unique multi-factor biometric authentication by mixing and matching biometric and smart card identification models to offer an enhanced two-factor authentication experience. As a matter of fact, e-signatures um, are often in our, in our solutions broken down into two steps, first an identification and then a signature. Um, and those two steps can be executed with the same biometric one after the other, uh, two separate matches, or it can be uh, uh, done with one biometric and then another biometric or a token and then a biometric. Um, so it offers some, some nice uh, uh, compliance uh, solutions there and uh, extra uh, um, authentication capability. Okay.
so this is um a, 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 this is actually should be a video, isn't it? Or is the next one a video? Hold on a second. Oh, there we go. This is a video showing uh, um, the use of our iris sensor. This is about the distance that's used. And as you saw, that green light indicates that um, the user's been matched. A blue light indicates that um, the sensor has seen eyes and they appear to be alive, uh, which is important. And then the green light indicates that um, a match has been made and that authentication is going to occur. All right. Um, we've, we're also introducing uh, a wearable augmented authentication device. Um, this is an RFID-based device that um, has uh, basically once authenticated to the person as worn, um, it can detect if it's been opened by a magnetic class opening detection, galvanic skin detection, and heartbeat liveness detection. Once this has been enabled and turned on, the RFID, there's actually two of them in there, will then uh, provide uh, an authentication and our system works with the, specifically with the RFID uh, built into this unit and some other uh, wearables out there. Um, uh, when, when I show you the RFID later, we'll just be using a token that has the same exact tech that's inside of it rather than the device. All right, speak of the devil. Okay, so now with that, I'm going to, um, um, if you bear with me for a moment, I'd like to show you this live demo. Um, I'll need to stop sharing here and I'll go over to the other machine. Um, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. I'll go off video here. Okay. You guys can still hear me, I assume. Okay. Now, um, this system here is, um, oops, it's gone, gone dark. There we go. All right. So this is a, a Wave computer from um, Systec and Solutions that was provided to us by the folks at Grand Tech to um, install our software and also um, prove in our system and show how it would work on, on such a system that would be used in clean rooms. Um, as you see here, we have an iris sensor. We also have a fingerprint sensor and we have an RFID reader uh, and a, a token. And so uh, here is, uh, this is actually the login screen for our, um, our config tool, which um, we'll be um, logging into. So I'm gonna just use the iris sensor first and I look into the sensor, this is a match, and then we log in. Now my alter ego Marco has been logged into uh, this system and I'm gonna log out, go back home, and now I'm going to use a fingerprint sensor. This is showing that we got a match, now we've logged in, and now we've done a fingerprint match. All right. And what's nice about this wave, it has a really nice uh, touch screen that's very responsive and easy to work with. I really, I really like it. Plus the screen is bright and big. Um, and now this is the RFID token. And I'm gonna put that on this reader and the login is completed. So as you can see, the logins are quick. Uh, the, the biometric modalities all work with the system. This, um, our application uh, installed on the system very easily. Um, and uh, I don't know if you guys know, uh, Compliance wire. Oh, sorry, let me just go to compliance wire here. Um, this is a, a learning system that Johnson and Johnson uses um, that um, that we've integrated as well, and we can um, we can do a biometric login here as well, just to show you that we support many different applications. Oh, hold on a second. It actually, what it did was it logged in here. <laughs> so now, if I undo that. Let's see it log in here. There we go. So now that's logged into Compliance Wire. So the application can automatically detect which um, um, our application can automatically detect which applications are here, and then um, decide how to authenticate. And you may have noticed that that had three uh, things: a username, a password, and a company code. So our application is capable of using uh, domains, company codes, all sorts of different uh, custom criteria for uh, facilitating uh, authentications. Okay. I think that's, uh, that does it here. I'm gonna just.
Okay. All right, good. So we're I'm back here. Um, as you can see, the live demo uh, that um, that system works very nicely. I'm going to proceed. Okay, so for some other uh, demos, what we have here is we have applications that we've integrated um, that um, we don't have access, you know, we, we're not gonna provide access to during a, a demo like this. It requires, some of these systems require being on a customer VPN and interactively, interacting directly with their uh, dev and QA platforms. Um, and so that's, we don't tend to do that um, when we uh, do demos like this. So we have some videos to share. Um, this application is a, a Lanza Moda uh, MES, and it shows an, uh, basically a, a login and then also an e-signature. If the video, I can get the video to start. There we go. I don't think you can hear, but this this is showing the match in the top left-hand uh, corner. The login has been completed, and you can see the user ID is showing in the top corner. Now going to, we're, we're moving to an e-signature. We're opening up the e-sign dialog, selecting the right selections uh, to, um, to go and initiate an e-signature uh, function. And then we're gonna do a touch. You can see in the top left-hand corner, the little indicator that shows, and then the e-signature is submitted and completed. Um, so that's, uh, that's that demo. Now I'm going to move on to another one. Uh, this is an integration with SAP. Um, so uh, this is a customized uh, MES system that you, that is using uh, SAP GUI 730, 40, 50, and 60. Uh, this version is 740. And you can see any signature has been completed here. This is a multi-stage e-signature that's been fully automated to go in one step. So step one was to put the username in. Step two was to put the password into the, um, the confirmation screen. Typically, we break that into multi-stages so the user can enter a reason code. Um, and actually, even that one, uh, later on, that was actually changed to have a, a two steps, two authentications, for, one for each step. All right. This one is, uh, is using uh, Camstar. Um, and this is, um, sorry for my, my messy desk there, um, <laughs> but this is using multiple biometrics. I don't know if you guys can hear this. I'm going to turn the volume up. Using Integral IBI 7 using fingerprint and iris. First I'll log in with my finger. Here's my match. Here's my login. And then Camstar will do it. Okay, now I'll use the iris sensor. This is the Iris sensor. I'm going to look in here and you'll see a green light when I get my match. The blue light indicates it sees my eyes. Green light indicates a match. And then the login's completed. So I don't know if folks are noticing, there's a little, um, there's a little flickering light that you see in the iris sensor. Um, the, the video cameras uh, uh, accentuate that light more than it looks um, to a user who's using it. Uh, those are uh, low energy, near infrared lights that are basically illuminating the iris and um, making um, unique colors show up in the iris that creates um, a higher level of uniqueness than natural light. Um, and that allows for um, a high certainty of matching. It, this is why um, iris sensors are not just used, they don't use a typical camera. Um, they're a little uh, more expensive than some some you know, typical uh, uh, webcams and things like that because they have, not only do they have specialty lights for light il illuminating the iris, but they also have a camera that it has um, uh, uh, functionality built into the chip to uh, identify iris, the actual iris part of the eye, crop that, analyze and, and process it, and then pr uh, do matching based on that um, that information that's been digitized and encrypted. Um, I don't know if folks uh, are using Antares Vision Serialization. This is a very short demo. The interesting th thing about this demo is 
that we did this. Um, um, we were, I was in New Jersey, and the system was in um, a facility in Beers, Belgium, actually in a low, uh, a, a secure network part of it that we had, and we were VPN in. And so the sensor that we were using was here in New Jersey, and we we used the technology to network the sensor into the J and J network and um, host it on this machine. This machine to this machine, it looked like the sensor was connected directly into its USB port. Um, and so let's uh, let's do this video. Okay, thanks for logging to Aaron. I'm here in New Jersey with my sensor. So I'm going to touch and log into the machine. Touch. So the is completed. Now we just wait for to process the login, which is just here. Thank you. Okay. So you can see it takes a little while for some of these systems to actually process their logins, um, which is fairly common for these applications. Um, the, 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 but the credentials get passed in uh, rather quickly, um, and then the system has to authenticate the user. Um, you guys might have noticed some interesting graphics on um, uh, on our slides, looking kind of like a video game. And um, what we've done is we've uh, we've actually built a video game. So we we brought a team of developers together and designers, um, and we developed a video game to be used for many different purposes, but mostly to facilitate change management. Um, since you're here in this webinar, uh, looking into biometrics, I assume that most of the folks here are innovators um, and they are used to introducing new technology into uh, a pretty conservative space. Uh, the pharma and life science manufacturing space uh, can be kind of conservative. And, um, and users have all sorts of concerns. Um, uh, management has all sorts of concerns. So change management is very critical. And so we've developed this game to allow you to introduce the, this product. Uh, it also acts as a training tool. So as the user encounters many different uh, uh, scenarios in which they need to authenticate, uh, in, in, in which they deal with, deal with every day at, at, in the factory, they're now using biometrics instead of using passwords or swipe cards. And so the, 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 the gameplay, um, bring somebody into the, the lobby, as you see up top. They then um, um, go through a secure uh, station um, and authenticate there. They go to a training room and they take training on how to use the iris sensor. And they also learn about the privacy and security um, uh, built into the system to protect their data, because that's a fundamental part of our, our product is the architecture, uh, AES-256 encryption, um, uh, the, the, the different uh, transport encryption from the storage encryption. Uh, these things all work to ensure that biometric data it, and cannot be lost. And also, even if it is, if, if some person gets into a database, that data is use, useless outside of the space. It's, uh, it's basically just bits. Um, and, and, and if, you know, if anyone wants to go into that further, uh, um, I'm happy to have, set up a meeting and talk to you about privacy and security. But we train users on uh, privacy and security of the system so they understand how important that is and that they're well protected. Um, and then they go in and they, they, um, they get gowned up. They go through a gowning process. We, we, we could actually turn this into a gowning uh, class, a uh, training on, on gowning, but they have to open their locker using authentication to, uh, with biometric. Um, and then they go through um, uh, um, corridors, avoiding the robots that are roaming the cor corridors. Um, and then they go and they do, they work here in the mixing room by working with a simulation of a PASX HMI. Um, and the, you know, we basically use the elements of PASX screens um, that you can see up here uh, to implement an HMI. They interact with the HMI. They do a mixing job. They have to do an e-signature to sign off on that. Um, and then they can complete. And then at the end of the game, we have um, a survey of several questions that allows us to gather feedback from, uh, from the participant on their experience of using uh, the biometrics, of learning uh, about it in this way, and how they feel about the, the introduction of the product uh, uh, into their facility. So it's a very useful uh, uh, tool here. And also the, the user has gotten about 11 or 12 chances to work with, especially the iris sensor. The fingerprint sensor, you learn faster. Iris sensor takes a, a little longer to figure out the distance, how to hold it, things like that, how to approach the mount, um, things like that. And that, the more training that people get, the better when they get on the floor and they go to, they go to work, it just works for them because they've, been, they've done it. Okay.
enough about that. Um, ATEX environments. Um, we also support ATEX environments. Uh, we've been working with uh, Pepperell and Fuchs to um, uh, design a, a nice en enclosure for ATEX environments, and they are in the process of certifying um, a, an a, a design for working with our sensors. They um, have evaluated our iris sensors within their enclosures, um, and they are um, they're moving forward with um, with a project. We have a project that uh, actually at Johnson & Johnson, and then uh, they're also working with us to introduce additional product projects for ATEX environments using um, our, um, our sensors. These have been tested with um, uh, quarter-inch lime glass um, and, you know, Different uh, different enclosures, different um, uh, uh, hoods. Uh, I think you saw in the in the live demo that um, I did it with uh, safety glasses. We we get safety glasses from almost all of our customers, and, and we bring that we we get them here, and our testers work with them regularly to make sure that we don't encounter anything that uh, offers challenges to our iris sensor. So far, we've done uh, we've done well with that. Okay, and we've, we've also done extensive device testing with a, with a diverse user base and diverse protective gear, like I mentioned. So, um, you know, different people of different races and backgrounds have different um, anatomies that can in, actually impact um, uh, biometric authentications. And uh, so we've done uh, significant testing with people with all different uh, backgrounds um, and, um, and characteristics. And so, um, and also with the different enclosures and, 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 and things. You, this image down here, I'm actually wearing uh, safety glasses, standard ones from the shop, uh, shop floor, then that hood with a, with a plastic shield, and then goggles over it. And then there's a, a eighth inch, I think it's an eighth inch plexi with the sensor behind it. And I was able, that was actually the match from behind the plexi. Um, so it's really very good. And uh, we only had one failure. Um, that's my pooch. He, we, it does not recognize dog, dog eyes. <laughs> we tried. Okay, so um, we really believe everyone should be using biometrics as a competitive advantage. Um, um, they offer sought after operational benefits such as improved data integrity, significant speed and accuracy, cutting edge security, uh, industry leading quality and reliability. And uh, we even offer a unique, mul this multi-factor biometric authentication capability. Um, and um, we, we think we have a very uh, exciting uh, product for the market. Um, and, uh, and we also have a lot of references. We have customers who have been using these for years um, and they've, they've gone to conferences with us, uh, presented with us uh, side by side on how biometrics uh, uh, improves on data integrity, on efficiency. So um, you know, if anyone would like to talk to folks who have been using this for a while, we're happy to, uh, to help with that as well. Okay, I think I moved a little fast, um, but um, um, let's open the floor to uh, questions and hopefully some answers. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much everybody for taking some time to join our webinar today. Like Mark just said, we're gonna open up the floor for any questions that you may have. We've already had some trickle in, so we'll cover those off, but feel free to type those into the chat window now if you haven't already, and then we'll answer them as they come up. Uh, if we don't get to your question, which I think we should be able to get to everything today, we'll send a follow-up email after the webinar, but we will dive into some. So let me just pull this open. Uh, one of the first questions, Mark, that we had was, how well does the iris scanner work with fog smudged safety glasses? Um, the answer to that is it depends, really. Um, we've worked with a lot of different glasses this one's not looking so great i could try it over there but um the uh it depends the, here's the thing if we can see in we can match if we can't see into the user's eye and if actually the, what we usually say is if the user can see out we can see in okay so it, it's um that's a trick question but uh <laughs> but it, it still works i mean um we we don't keep these, well, I just pulled this off the floor um, and we test <laughs> this stuff all the time. But um, yeah, yeah, it, 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 um, it depends on how bad the, fogs, the, the fog and smudging is because we, we can't work magic. We still have to have a clear view of the eye um, in order to do a match. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, another question that we had is, is your solution implemented with Okta authentication? Um, so OAuth and SAML, um, our common uh, um, uh, um, authentication schemes. 
Um, we do not currently have an integration with those. We do have an infrastructure to do it. Um, we, we've been looking for somebody who wants to want it in order to do it. Um, we have a very loose integration with it where, um, for example, um, um, Okta and Ping ID uh, will uh, display um, a, a dialogue, a common dialogue for doing all authentications. Um, and that common dialogue, we, we can integrate with our, our client and submit credentials to that common dialogue and store the credentials for that dialogue specifically. And we do that currently for one of our customers. Um, but in terms of a direct OAuth or SAML uh, support on the back end of our system for authenticating users through those uh, architectures, not yet. Um, but we'd be very, very happy to do it. By the way, we have we have all the libraries and uh, communications architecture components in place to do it. We, we, we've looked at um, a lot of the different uh, uh, designs. Uh, we've looked at FIDO2 for years. We've looked at um, Okta. We've looked at Ping ID. Um, 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 what's the other one? Uh, Open ID. Um, and you know, we know what we need to do. We just haven't had an opportunity yet to do it. Perfect. Okay. Great answer. Uh, next up is how do you address privacy concerns for Iris biometrics? Okay. So, um, first of all, education and training. Um, so everybody asks about this question. You have to have a good plan for education and training. You have to have specific um, documentation that, that outlines for your users, for management, for labor representatives, for legal. Um, all these folks um, need to have um, basically um, communications that's consistent and clear that explains how this is how this is done. Um, we what we do what we have from a, from a technology architecture is um, iris matching is done through um, digital new, um, uh, uh, templates. So what happens is the iris sensor um, scans the eye, identifies the iris image. It then um, translates, it analyzes that image and turns it into a, 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 numer a, a hex series of, of data that then represents the unique characteristics of the iris that it's seen. All right, it encrypts that data using TLS 1.2 and sends it to a matching server. The matching server is storing um, enrollment templates that were generated um, through an enrollment process. And those are, um, those are encrypted and stored using AES 256. Um, when the, um, those templates are, are kept in memory on the application server to facilitate quick matching. And when a, when a new um, template comes in, to the matching server, it is compared to the list of known um, iris templates, uh, enrollment templates, and a match is, is generated or a probability of a match is generated. And then the ID um, of that match is then sent into our system. Um, so the, uh, you know, and the, uh, the encryption of the AES-256 encryption of, the, of that data is done using certificates on the uh, application server, not on the client. I hope that was clear. I usually like to do that answer when I'm, you know, looking somebody in the eye. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I can tell them I, I pop over their head or, you know, whatever. But um, if, uh, if if whoever asked the question, I'd be happy to have that conversation with you uh, anytime. Um, you know, we, we can go into it deeper and we have a whole set of, we, we take change management. I think you know, might have noticed we take change management very seriously. Our, our VP of compliance was actually um, our, our first customer. So our VP of compliance came out of Ethicon where we implemented our first, uh, our our first deployment a uh, very long time ago. Um, and he was deploying MES. He deployed our biometric solution in that facility. And now he, he, is, he is our VP of compliance and um, he works with us to always keep the voice of the customer and the concerns of the customer present in every design session that we, uh, we go through. Um, and change management, we have a whole set of slides and documentation to help you do change management. Um, we've even done times when we go on site and we do uh, pre-pandemic, 
um, where we just go and we do session after session after session with folks answering the questions and making them uh, and, and making them comfortable with what what is coming. But we, we we really encourage a campaign, a marketing campaign that introduces the product. One of the first marketing campaigns that introduced fingerprint um, uh, with our product. Uh, we we work with the customer came up with a slogan. It was um, forget passwords, give them the finger. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this takes this thing, you know, if you're clever, you can take this thing out of uh, people's concerns and that starts that you down the road of success. Great. I love that. <laughs> That's a good one. That's, um, our, that's our pens. We put it on our business cards. <laughs> <laughs> Brings a good laugh, I guess, for, for everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Some more questions have come in, Mark. So sure. where is biometric registration data kept? Is this integrated into Windows? Okay, so um, our our, our enrollment data is stored in a uh, MS SQL or Oracle database. Um, and as I mentioned, our application server encrypts that data using AES-256 and stores it in the database. The database, if, there, if, if a customer wants to enable um, database encryption further on top of what we're doing, they can do that as well. We do not store biometric data in Active Directory. Um, we store it in our own store because we need to, do, Active Directory hashes the, the uh, credentials and biometric data, and we need uh, to uh, decrypt that data into something that is um, usable, both, uh, 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 both a credential or a matching template that then could be matched um, in, a, in a process on the application servers. Um, we do. We do. However, we have implemented, uh, for example, a Windows Hello um, integration with, um, I believe, with PASX um, uh, 3.2. And so um, uh, Windows Hello uh, uses different um, biometric sensors, although our fingerprint sensor is compatible. Um, and then it stores it stores the biometric data directly on the workstation. But it's a very non-scalable model. Um, so it's a, and if anyone wants to talk about that, happy to talk to you about that. Okay, perfect. There's quite a few, so we'll keep uh, keep chugging along. How easy it for how easy is it? Sorry, for these biometric authentication tools to integrate with Sysdeck and Solutions Hardware. We know that you have a, a Wave unit there. So how uh, how easy was that to to integrate? It was a it was a, a nothing burger. <laughs> 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 no, we, we did a standard install. We didn't have to do anything special. One nice thing is there's two USB ports directly on the back of that of that unit, and our sensors plug directly into there. Um, we only had to add a USB hub non-powered in order to get the RFID on there. But when we were doing the install, we noticed that there's an RFID built into the keyboard, which is pretty cool. But when we tested that, that wasn't picked up by our um, our libraries. Um, and it was doing like a barcode scan type of thing. So it, our, our token was reading, but um, we, we haven't done an integration, but we're gonna be looking at integrating the built-in RFID reader so you don't need another outboard thing and a, and a hub. Uh, the install application install was straight up, just follow the RIQ and um, there was nothing custom we need to do on it. The, um, the machine is uh, robust. Um, it has, seems to have a good processor memory um, and, um, and, and, and drive. So the performance, as you could see, the performance was excellent. Um, the application server that we're using in that demo is in Ohio. It's not even a, in an application server here in New Jersey. We're in New Jersey. Um, this is here in my home, on my home network. I've got a 200 meg cable connection, uh, actually going over VPN to another supplier and then back out. But, um, and then, um, it's, uh, Sorry, then it's going to Ohio for the application server. So as you could see, the performance was uh, was excellent. In a factory, um, we've seen in factories where uh, they have like one and two millisecond latency between uh, the, work, the shop floor and the, um, at the the data center. The performance is pretty remarkable. Uh, but those those machines uh, took nothing special to 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 integrate and to install on, and um, you know were, seemed to be fully functional. Great, perfect. So on the topic of that, does the RFID or RF wristband require storage of personal data? Um, so the wristband, this is the Ionosys um, wristband, right? And and I showed, and what they do, um, there's 
there's two parts to it. One is the band itself, which has two different RFIDs that get activated. One can be used for access control, and the other one can be used for um, authentication to applications. Um, and the, the, the way we enroll, when we enroll these devices, our, our enrollment process, in order to um, add an iris to an enrollment, a user must match. You can't put an identifier into a user profile. The user must match in order to get tied to a set of credentials. Same thing with the RFID band. The user must match in order to um, get tied to a set of credentials. Um, and then, uh, and so our system and it's our security architecture is storing uh, user credentials. Um, in our system, we looked at GDPR requirements and we, we eliminated the need to have a personal name as part of a user profile. The, so we keep a minimal amount of data as possible. We're also CFR 21 part 11 and Annex 11 compliant in all the ways in which we manage this data. Um, but um, by eliminating a name, we realized that if someone were to say, somehow hack and steal our database or some, you know, most fraud, I think was it 75% of fraud comes from internal resources, right? If somebody were to hack that data and put it out there on the internet, um, Oh, that's a scary thought. Oh, no, <laughs> they, they would only have an ID, a numeric ID, which I don't know. How, how do you know who that is? You have to go back to the corporation and hack the rest of their data, right? And then you have biometric data that's encrypted and encoded. And and that data is just a long string. It's just a 3,000 character string that you need to figure out how to use. And you don't even know what that is, right? And so, and good luck decrypting an AES-256 encrypted um, um, uh, data set. That's not really possible with the equipment we have available today, unless you set up a giant Bitcoin mining operation across the world to try to do it. And even then, you know, I'm not sure that's going to work. Anyway, um, the so, but the, the RFID device itself has no personal data on it. It just says RFID data on it. And what happens is it gets, it gets biometrically identified with a, um, they have a little um, uh, unit that has a palm vein biometric um, and, um, and, and, and a heartbeat, and, uh, heartbeat thing. And then it, it matches the user to confirm. And then it's it, inside, the, inside the architecture, it says this RFID ID is linked to this biometric identity inside the system. And then that's shared um, between the architectures. Um, and then the person has already um, matched to link that RFID ID to our list of credentials. And so now when they go off on the floor, all they're doing is sharing the RFID ID when they swipe, and then our system is pulling credentials based on that. Um, I hope that answered your question. Perfect. I'm sorry, it was a little complicated, but it is, these things are a little complicated. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so there was another question, which I think we would have kind of already touched on, which was, how much battery backup does the iris scanner have um or iris sensor have sorry i know you kind of we touched on that it's a usb uh connection but maybe you could kind of explain that a little bit okay um so i'm going to answer that in a strange way so um we have i mentioned the rad device that we that we um that we uh, developed um that's built on a raspberry pi platform raspberry pi zero and this uses five volt power that's provided over a USB, over US micro USB port. Okay, so this gets a five volt. What we do is we plug the sensors directly into this device. Um, so the, the sensor plugs in into here, and the power and data plugs in here. All right, and then so the sensor is powered by the five volt USB connection coming off the computer that is powering this. Our Raspberry Pi device, so it requires a uh, rather low power in order to operate. Um, the this can be actually fitted with power, uh, backup power, battery backup power, um, as well to to support the device. But typically, when you lose, you know, when you're losing your your power, you lose your network, and a lot of this stuff just goes by the wayside. But if you have back backup on the on the computer system that it's plugged into, then that that backup all provides power to the sensor. They're not a high powered unit. We do have all the specs um, available for their power utilization, um, for the uh, the specs of the low energy uh, and near infrared light for, for, for folks who want to look into the uh, safety of that, um, that has been analyzed to the nines and tens. Um, 
but uh, I'm not sure if I've answered the battery backup question that well. One other thing that we have learned about or did, did kind of figured out with the sensor is that um, for places where um, for you're in a clean room and you have the sensor and if you if the sensor fails, you need to be be able to continue to, to do work. Um, we can actually plug multiple sensors into a single system. And then um, if one sensor fails, the other sensor can pick up the work. And so you can have multiple iris sensors. And if one device fails, the other one uh, will continue to work. Um, so that is that does work as a redundant solution. Um, so I don't know if that really answers your question. I'm, I'm trying here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can always uh, have follow up calls need be. And I think those were all the questions as of right now. If you do have any, any other questions, feel free to pop, pop them in the chat and we will be able to follow up after the webinar. But we just wanted to say thanks again so much for, for everybody taking the time out of your day and joining Mark and I. Uh, just a reminder, you can reach out to us via info at grantech.com and you'll also be receiving a recording of this presentation uh, once it's ready. Mark and I are both very active on LinkedIn, so feel free to connect with us and stay in touch. And thank you again, Mark, for uh, for being on the webinar today and delivering all that amazing info. And thanks again to, to everybody who uh, who did join. You're welcome, and uh, thanks thanks for setting this up and uh, and uh, for the Grand Tech team and um, doing such a phenomenal job at uh, presenting it and, and and bringing it to folks. Thanks, everybody. Absolutely. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.